Um, Kezia Gitao, um, I'm head of R&D. How do you identify consumer needs mm -hmm. and whichever product that you end up putting for us out in the, in the market? Okay. So one, uh, R&D is a very big, uh, big thing in bio and mm -hmm. uh, definitely uh, for the last four years I've been in this company, mm -hmm. we've actually done quite a lot when it comes to R&D mm -hmm. from probiotic yogurt to Greek yogurt and now we even are venturing into a plant-based uh, mm -hmm. yogurt. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of ways of actually how we identify consumer needs is um, world trends. Because one of the things mm -hmm. you'll notice that we are always among the first ones to actually do something that no one else so far has done. And mm. so we really look at the market in a very wider perspective rather than mm. just Kenya. We don't even just look at Africa. We actually look at what the world is actually doing. Mm. And uh, we have that and we get quite a lot of support from our suppliers because mm. we have quite a lot of uh, imports. And because of that, we always have talks with them where they're able to come and uh, discuss with us things that even other markets outside Africa that are doing. Mm. And what was very interesting, even by the time we were getting Greek yogurt out there, we actually thought it was actually new to Kenyans, yes. but it was really exciting that people actually knew about it. Some of them are like, ah, oh, you guys have Greek yogurt. Finally. Yeah, finally. And I guess it is also based on the fact that our market is just not uh, uh, Kenyans alone, because we're also targeting expatriates and all these people are people who actually travel. And mm. even most of the Kenyans we are targeting are people who actually travel and know quite a lot when it comes to um, great trends outside the world. Mm. And other than that, we listen to our customers, because mm. one of the things that we're very big at is consumer feedback. Mm. And we've put up a platform whereby we allow our customers to actually bring back their feedback. So we do listen to our consumer. How enlightened is... Uh is the kind of consumer you serve. Okay, you've talked, some guys are traveling and all that, asking all these questions. But I think one challenge that in this kind of market is that consumer A tells you do this, consumer mm -hmm. B tells you do that, yeah. consumer C. So how do you sieve it until? How do we sieve it until the butter? <laughs> <laughs> So I, I think we we allow all comments to come in, uh, whether mm. it's consumer A, B, or even C. And at the end of the day, you know, as a company, you have a vision and the direction you're going. Mm. So at the end of the day, as much as what comes in from the consumer, we also have to look at the, what the company believes in. Mm. And what the company believes in, so we come and merge that with what the company believes and mm. what the company wants to actually offer outside there. Because okay. one of the things for you to actually become a very successful in business is that you need to know your market. So at the end of the day, I, there's a wide market. I need to know and have a focus on one of those and decide this is mm. the way I want to go. And that has always been set from the beginning, ever since Bio was ever born. Mm. The kind of market that it's targeting was always set. And we always come back and uh, audit it against that. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, four years, because the company has been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. What is the, the space for innovation that the kind of support systems behind bio. So you've talked about your suppliers and your partners and, and all that. Is that getting easier for you if you need this kind of hydrocolloid or you need some equipment and you need all this, you need knowledge, you need mm -hmm. support from somebody who knows better. Mm -hmm. Is that environment getting easier for you in the kind of work you do in product development? Yeah, I think it's actually very easy and one of the things that actually has made it easy is uh, when you look at our company, we are quite vast <laughs> in terms mm. of when you look at race and everything, yes. it's really big and now when we have all that pool of people come mm. together, especially when it comes to uh, new products and uh, marketing where we have also a quite presentation of different races in mm. there and uh, people from different countries, it allows us to tap into so much knowledge oh, yeah. such that I know someone like my uh, my, my MD came from a company somewhere oh, in, yes. uh, in, uh, in Europe so mm. they already know what Europe is doing and so oh, yes. we're able to tap into that and we're even mm. able to probably use his connections to try and get somebody to help us in case uh, we're mm. developing and we find challenges with technology and stuff mm. like that mm. but ideally I think it's getting easier with time because um, again they, they, we have internet there's so much information out, outside there. Mm. And the fact that Kenyans are also becoming very aware people, especially with what they're feeding, it mm. also makes us to be on top of our game to ensure that we are also becoming uh, mm. tapping into the same information. Now, when I look at lots of your products, you mm -hmm. probably are in that space of, you know, where there's some health and wellness and 
quality products and all these things. Mm -hmm. How hard is it for you, if you look at the general market that is used to products that you know, yeah, regular stuff, mm -hmm. to innovate for the for that space, nutrition and health? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So nutritional health has been quite big in bio and uh, even when you look at our portfolios uh, we are always keen to ensure that we bring in the health aspect of it mm -hmm. and I guess when we looked at also plant-based it was also coming from a nutritional and health perspective because mm -hmm. we're like we do have a segment outside there which can't consume milk mm -hmm. and uh, because they can't consume milk uh, are we just going to assume them and decide that they're not going to get the benefit of uh, probiotic cultures mm -hmm. and so we're like you know what this is something we can actually do and since in Kenya we know coconut is quite a lot especially in the coastal region mm -hmm. and we know we can get very fresh we're like why not try it out mm -hmm. and so it was something we decided we we're gonna go with that and mm -hmm. I think we managed it because I think we made it was quite challenging because you know there's not so much like when it comes to non-dairy it's something new oh, yeah. so uh, even when you look from a world perspective it's very new we have big names which also innovated just non-dairy the other day mm. so it, there was not so much information but we were still able to come up with something that people like and we really mm. got very good feedback coming from that so mm. even the other things we're really concentrating on is things like sugar mm. I know Kenya's a sweet tooth <laughs> Yeah. It's the most difficult trying to create a less sweet product in Kenya is the hardest yes. thing ever. <laughs> but one of the things we are also concentrating so much is educating people. Because mm. as much as we want them to, as much as we want to move with their palate, we want them mm. to understand, guys, uh, we need to accept the fact that we are having so many sicknesses coming in and they're mostly lifestyle related. Mm. And I think it's good for you guys to try this and taste and feel how this feels. So yeah, it's and, interesting uh, yeah. you talk about sugar. <laughs> I'm on my third week of having a break with it. It's, <laughs> That's it's hard. Nice. <laughs> it's hard. Uh, <laughs> now, let's talk about cheese. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a Kenyan, so I don't understand cheese. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> cheese has always been... It's yes. been in the country for a while, but I think Kenyans are still uh, yes, trying I, to I, I understand I have friends in Western Uganda and uh, Rwanda who take cheese as a snack. And, um, yeah, I go to those Barara places, people really know cheese, but for me, I... So... How was cheese getting into the cheese uh, category? And as you are developing all these concepts, mm -hmm. what were you looking at delivering? Okay. I think uh, one thing that we're very good at is that our milk is very good and we, thri we thrive in that, that our milk is of very good quality. Mm -hmm. And now when we're looking at innovation and you're wondering what more can we do when in the dairy segment, concerning the fact that it's, the core, it's our core business, mm -hmm. we were like, why not give cheese? Concerning the fact that we have very good cream mm -hmm. and milk, at the end of the day, you're going to get very good cheese. And with cheese, with, when, if you love cheese, you're able to really pick good cheese. Because without good milk, you will not have a very good product at the end. Mm. And so we thought, it's time we actually did this. And so we moved forward and actually came up and decided to join that small segment of, <laughs> of offering <laughs> Kenyans. <laughs> very good cheese. As we go really to the end of this interview is Greek style yoga. Mm -hmm. you no, know, even the name really <laughs> tells is, is quite far. Mm -hmm. uh, how hard was that really to get through? Uh, and even getting the courage to actually get and introduce it or there were too many people asking for it <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those very interesting projects that we actually did because mm. i remember this one it was a, didn't even take a lot of planning it was just that let's do greek and then mm. there we were we just found ourselves into the market with it and what was very interesting with it is our concept when we came up with greek because we were like we want something very thick something mm. that will offer uh, consumers uh, high protein mm. and high fat and very creamy now what was interesting was the flavor part of it, the fruit part of it. So mm. we decided we were gonna go Mediterranean. And so, uh, so we uh -huh. did, other than nature, which definitely nature is always our highest selling, we decided we were going to go with flavors like prune, flavors like fig, flavors like honey. The other mm. thing is that most of the world trends, Greek always goes with honey. Mm. And so we went that way and the reception was very good. But again, we also noted that Kenyans will always be Kenyans and Kenyans love their vanillas mm. and they love their strawberries so much. So we were like, why not just give them one of those things that they love most, vanilla. Mm. And uh, so we went out with vanilla. We even decided that we we're going to do real fruit vanilla and that's what we added to it. And we, it was very nice. The combination of just Greek and vanilla was really awesome. It was very creamy and very tasteful. And I think we, we did we did make a mm. right decision. What I realized is that um, 
Yes, in a market where vanilla and strawberry seems to be, <laughs> you walk in blind and you just and pick you just it. Pick. <laughs> um, you've really played around with flavors, mm -hmm. you know, combinations, whether it's in your drink uh, category or in or, your... Yeah. How was that? Uh, or is just, they just say, okay, let's, let's work on this. <laughs> How do you identify that? Or it's, it's also a kind of a hit or miss. Thing. Yeah, it's either a hit or a miss thing, but I think most of it we've actually hit. Because mm -hmm. when you look at our drink yogurt, those is, the, the, nobody would imagine you would mix a cucumber mint yes. and get mm -hmm. a very nice drink out of it. I don't even think Kenyans are like, what is yuzu? And yuzu is oh, just, yeah, yeah well, that's just like a Japanese way of calling lemon and lime. So, oh. yeah, so, and the other thing is, we are recognizing that Kenyans are actually very informed people. Mm. And even if they're not informed, trust you me, they will go and get to know what that is. And so we are, because of that, we don't want to assume that our Kenyans, our Kenyan market is just based on just strawberry and vanilla, despite the fact that it's true. Mm. Strawberry and vanilla will always win because it's, it's, it's human nature to want to know, to get used to something that you're used to as, mm. a, as opposed to unknown. But us venturing into unknown has been so exciting and it has made us realize that, you know what, Kenyans are, are really dynamic and they want excitement. And let's mm. agree, generation we are raising today mm. are very people who want to try the unknown and the new. And so that's what we are trying to target. For us, the future is exciting because mm. I continue imagining that there's so much that is happening today. Today, mm. people are talking of sustainability. People are talking of, uh, of putting yogurt in uh, papers, oh, yes. in paper pack. I'm like, what is that? So the market out there is so vast for us. I think there is no limit. I can't decide to mention one by one, mm. but there is no limit. And for us, always watch this space. We will always put something exciting for our customers.